Tonight, at least nine dead, many more hurt in a commuter train disaster near Sydney. European leaders rally behind Bush, while Mandela condemns talk of war. And a breakthrough in the fight against a deadly Queensland Marine stinger. Good evening, Andrew Lofthouse with ABC News. New South Wales is counting the dead and injured tonight after a train derailment on Sydney's outskirts this morning. The commuter train came off the rails near Waterfall, a township just south of Sydney. Nine people, including the driver, died as the two leading carriages left the rails and smashed into the side of a steep sandstone embankment. 43 passengers were injured, four are listed as critical, 21 are in a serious condition. The four-carriage train was travelling from Sydney to Port Kembla. Already, the New South Wales government has ordered a judicial inquiry. Because of the remote site, emergency workers struggled to get the injured out. Survivors have described a chaotic scene with bodies thrown from the wreckage while some passengers remained trapped for hours. The 6.24 Tangara service left Central Station on time, headed south, bound for Port Kembla. One hour and seven minutes later, the four-carriage train lay stricken and derailed on Sydney's southern outskirts. The front of the train has collided with that wall in a heavy impact and then the remaining carriages have been dragged alongside the actual sandstone wall. As the train left the tracks, it speared across the northbound rails. The leading carriages climbed the embankment on the other side of the tracks, the carriages destroying stanchions and pulling down overhead wires. It came to rest with two carriages overturned. ABC Radio reporter Noni Walsh was inside the third carriage. I'm, I've never been on a Tangara going that fast. It was really fast and people looked around at each other. You could tell they were thinking, you know, something's going to go wrong. And then there was this almighty crash and we went over. The first rescue crews at the scene were forced to clamber through windows to reach the passengers trapped inside. The rescue work was difficult and made more so by steep and rocky access to the scene one road in and you can imagine there was a lot many vehicles and the rescue equipment was heavy and cumbersome and heavyweight and so you need a lot of personnel to be able to move through the area. Damage inside the carriages also hampered efforts to reach the injured. There has been a lot of um, structural movement inside the carriage which has caused a number of people to be pinned and trapped uh, by various pillars and seats etc. With around 80 passengers on board, the scale of the accident had emergency crews bracing for the worst. Fleets of ambulances and rescue helicopters were called to ferry the injured to hospital. Julie Sahalko came frantically searching for her 21-year-old daughter, who'd boarded the train shortly before it derailed. Oh, she just said there was people injured and dead everywhere. But... After more than two hours, the critically injured were still being airlifted to hospital. We're in the middle of a terrible, terrible tragedy. There are families bracing themselves for news uh, as we speak to you. Um, I want to say that the thoughts of all of us are with those families at this time. By midday at the site of the accident, there were no more lives to save. It's now more than seven hours since the accident and rescue has turned to recovery as police begin the delicate task of removing the bodies of victims from the wreckage. The New South Wales government has wasted no time in ordering a judicial inquiry into the accident to be led by Justice Peter McInerney. A data recorder from the train has been recovered and the destroyed carriages will be completely rebuilt as part of the investigation. Ben Wilson, ABC News, Waterfall. The injured who were pulled from the wreckage were ferried to several hospitals across Sydney. Despite delays getting some paramedics to the scene, authorities are praising the rescue operation. One by one, victims of the rail disaster were taken to seven hospitals across southern Sydney. At least 43 passengers needed medical treatment, four in a critical condition, 21 with serious injuries and 18 in a stable condition. Patients with head, chest, leg injuries, um, a various number of injuries going throughout the bodies, yeah. Bob Williams' 18-year-old grandson was asleep in the first carriage and thrown from his seat, suffering cracked ribs and a back injury. We think that he's very lucky to be alive, and we're very thankful. Most were ferried by the 30 ambulances which responded to the tragedy. The seven worst cases were airlifted by helicopters. 60 paramedics frantically attended the wounded, working in extremely difficult conditions with rough terrain and communications problems.
when our officers arrived, there was quite a, uh, a high level of uh, alarm and, and to a, a point of almost hysteria. Ambulance officers acted to calm those trapped inside the crumpled carriages, keeping an emotional lifeline until they were rescued. A triage centre was set up some distance north of the wreckage where every passenger was assessed before being sent to hospital or being allowed to leave. As soon as hospitals received word of the accident, their disaster plans were put into action, extra blood and medical supplies were rushed out from the city, more staff were called in and emergency departments were cleared to make way for an influx of wounded. After touring the scene, Premier Bob Carr visited St George Hospital which treated seven of the injured. And at the back of my mind is the big question of whether we'd be ready for a September 11 or Bali style emergency. What happened at this hospital on short notice confirms that our health professionals are up to the world's best. Many of the victims will be in hospital for some time with counsellors helping those who survived come to terms with their ordeal. Adrian Rochella, ABC News, Sydney.